Hey, Laura. Hey, Keith. How are you? I'm doing okay. You? Yeah. Yeah. We've been traveling a bunch. A little worn out. A little worn out. And little things keep popping up. <laughs> little <laughs> fires to put out, but the opposite. Plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought I fixed the sink before we left. And I, think I did. You did. I did. Yeah. Um, but now there's a new problem. Pipes were clogged because you uh, were working on your beer. <laughs> I was. I I think on the drive home from Indy, I said, oh, I almost forgot I need to bottle my beer tonight before I head out for a work trip. But it shouldn't take too long. It should be fine. And I got it done. I bottled everything. I was cleaning everything up and ready to sit on the couch and have an IPA with you. And I got to the bottom where all like the yeast and hoppy stuff was and mix it with water to send it down the drain. And then we had a huge, epic hop flood yeah. all over our kitchen. Needless to say, there's a mess. And it's going to get cleaned up. And it's going to get fixed. So anyway, long story short, this is going to be a, a previously released episode coming out. And appropriately so, I'm going to pick, uh, how do we keep moving forward? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was wondering which one you were going to pick. Yeah. So I'm hoping like listening back, some of this is going to help as we move forward. Yeah. One thing I'll mention too, just on our, our trip, I was also struggling with a hurt toe, like a strained toe. Yeah. It's a strained toe or gout. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you stressed like the ligaments and stuff when you took a little tumble on our I, first I trip so. of the month yeah, to Nashville. I think so. We had two doctors and they were split on their opinions. So so I iced, I took ibuprofen yeah. and I elevated my foot and drank a lot of water. But um, And you kept moving too. And I kept moving. A flat tire is not going to keep me away from the Indy 500. Yeah. But I pushed through. So it, it also kind of a little setback there for me on our trip. And I kept moving forward at my own pace. Yeah. So I think it is appropriate we talk about this. Last night I went to bed and I thought, okay, that is going to be the last batch of beer I ever brew. This was a mess. I'm not going to do it again. It wasn't hard, but I messed up and I ruined the house. I think I told right. you I broke the house. Yeah. And I'm like, it's a thing and it's going to, it's going to get resolved. Right. It's just going to take some time. <laughs> I woke up this morning with a resolve of saying, okay, yes, I kind of broke the house. Yes. We're going to work through it. I also know now, although it says you can put that down the pipes, I will not be doing that again. I'll be putting it in our compost bin. That makes a lot of sense. So I've learned from it and I've grown. I think my biggest takeaway is you admitting, oh, this is why you hover. I actually did say that this morning. <laughs> I go, so now I really get why you hover. And 98% of the time, I do not need it. 2%, which was last night, could have probably used you. I distracted you by hockey. Yeah, you put hockey on. I'm like, all right, I'll leave you alone. I mean, I got the message. I realized I'm like, okay, she put hockey on. She doesn't want me bothering her. I came over and I took a couple pictures just to document that you were having fun with you know, your little hobby. I thought that'd be nice. And then, my bottles. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, I'll walk away. I'll go try to watch hockey. And, and that's just how sometimes life goes, right? Yep. Doing something fun. Life throws a little wrinkle in it. And then you figure out, okay, you don't have to throw everything out that's fun because you had a wrinkle. You can learn from it and you can move forward. Yeah. The, uh, there's a line from the TV show Scrubs. Okay. <laughs> the, the, the chief of medicine, you know, the Dr. Kelso, his yeah. character. He's like, what do I always say to his lawyer, Ted? Too much ha ha, pretty soon boo hoo. <laughs> oh. And it makes me laugh <laughs> so hard because it's such a downer to be like, stop having fun. And, uh, that's, that's not the takeaway here. <laughs> I hope. No. But anyway. Anything else going on? I don't think so. I'm looking forward to getting back to it with you next week. Yeah, you're going on another trip, a work trip this yep, time. A couple of days. Yeah, lots of lots of traveling in the month of May. Exactly. I'm excited for June. So yeah, we'll get back to it and have a new episode very soon. But for right now, we're going to re-release. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome back to In Residence. I'm Keith. I'm Laura. What are you feeling right now? 
I'm feeling depressed and dejected. Why? Because I don't feel like we're adding any value for anything. And there's nothing like I felt okay for like three minutes talking about stumbling across live music. Okay. But now talking about the flow for 10 minutes and not really saying anything, it's like, I'm like, oh, we're not talking about anything. And I really can't imagine anybody being interested in what we said for the last 15, 10 minutes. So you're feeling the pressure of making it good and you're feeling the time pressure of not just making it good, but making it good and turning it out by Thursday. So I guess my question is, I mean, is it less about the weekend and is it more about the pressure? Yeah, it probably is. That you're feeling. That would probably be better to talk about. So tell me more about that. What are, how are you, how are you feeling? Cause, I, and I will say, that I'm sensing, I can sense it in our conversation, right? Yeah. Um, that there is this like weight on you right now. It feels like. Yeah. Talk about that. We made a commitment to release a podcast every week, and we don't have a podcast <laughs> to release. And it's Tuesday, and it's supposed to go out Thursday at one in the morning. So if you do the math, what does that mean? It means I have a long 24 hours ahead of me to get a podcast out. Okay. And I'm feeling the weight of delivering, right? Of shipping the work. Mm -hmm. And it's because there's, we're trying to figure out something to talk about. And I don't feel like what we're talking about is providing any value to anybody when we're trying to just talk about our anniversary. Like, it's fine for us to talk a little bit about it and let people in a little bit to our experience and what we did. Sure. But then what? And like you said, this is probably more important to talk about that since a week ago, I wasn't feeling good. This is about the time by Tuesday evening after we got back from our trip, my throat started feeling weird. And I was like, oh, that's a weird feeling. <laughs> so, so I tested and I was negative. So I spent the whole next day, Wednesday, in my studio editing the podcast that went out that Thursday. And that whole day, I just started feeling worse and worse and worse and like a little woozy if I stood up too fast and a little tired and all these things. But I scheduled the podcast, it's just the audio version, got it scheduled. You know, it, I'm sure it wasn't the best, but the point right now is to keep showing up. And the perfectionist in me wants it to be the best ever all the time. But I know that's not realistic. And we've talked about that, obviously. But it's still there. And so it's been a week of me not being, less not being able to record or know what to record or what to talk about if we do. And thought we had a good idea. <laughs> and we don't. It's a bad idea. <laughs> I don't think it's a bad idea. I mean, I think sometimes it's really easy to take an idea and classify it as bad or good, right? I know you're kind of like, I know, Laura, I know this. <laughs> I'm saying that because I don't want to constantly say it's not generous because uh, it doesn't feel helpful to anybody to listen to me meander about my vacation, nor does it, would it be helpful for me to meander and complain about having COVID, you know? Right. I uh, will say though, what I'm noticing is a couple things that are coming through. Mm -hmm. Our conversations are, I'm hearing this theme that's been running through. And, and we talked about this on our vacation about you feeling that there was going to be a time crunch getting the podcast out because you had a short week to edit mm -hmm. the podcast we recorded and release it by Thursday. Mm -hmm. So so you pushing through that last day where you were in somewhat of a COVID haze, not mm -hmm. knowing it was a COVID haze at the time, mm -hmm. and releasing was a win. But now with COVID, like you said, we haven't been able to record. It hit our whole house, yeah. <laughs> right? I was the last one standing um, on Saturday. Mm. I finally tested positive after everyone else fell. We didn't record. We're recording really late this week. And this means you don't just have a shortened week like you did last time. Cut that in half. I have a day. You have a day. <laughs> so maybe my question to you yeah, is... Let's roll with it. When we have life throw us these unexpected things, how do you keep going and how do you keep showing up and doing the best you can with the time that you have and not letting it stifle you or just completely make you say, you know what, I'm just going to go crawl back under the covers and wave the white flag. Yeah, well, 
right away, I think it's important to know, is it the right time to wave the white flag? Because that's okay. It doesn't feel like it's okay, but sometimes you have to be realistic and, and understand. With that being said, I don't think this is one of those times. I think the way I try to the way I want to work through these types of things and the way I try to work through these things is choosing action. And we did today. We, I mean, we tried, we tried what a couple nights ago to start ideating it. and ruminating about, okay, let's try to get this to happen. What are we going to talk about? And it just, I at, wasn't there. I was not no, feeling and, well. And we're, we're having trouble and that's fine, but we still chose an action, which was the action was just simply to have a conversation. And today we chose the action of starting that conversation again and saying, let's go down and record. And that still led to not an outcome that we were looking for because we're both feeling like this isn't going the way... <laughs> The mood and the... The mood and the... Vo- and like, why am I not feeling this? It sounded like a good idea. Well, okay. And the whole point that I'm trying to make is we're just going to keep choosing action as long as we can. And I think it's working because now we're actually talking about something that matters and that can relate to a, a larger amount of people, which is how do you keep going? Especially when you feel like you want to wave that white flag or you want to give up or it, it, that's like, that's the dip. It's like it, when you're in the trough, you're in the hard part. My takeaway is like, that's not the time to quit. The time to quit is before you get in that. If you're in the hard part, it's like you better muster through and mm-hmm. you know, because you should have known before you should have, you should have known it was going to be hard and I'm there with this or at the end, like I did that. It was horrible and I'm not going to do that again <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. Is it, that's what I get from from that type of thinking? Uh, not that it's easy, and not that I, yeah. I mean, I felt like not doing much for the last five days, and I'm not gonna feel like doing much for the next five days either. But what can I do? I finally got back out for my morning walk. Yeah, it's, it's just good. Like my phone alerted me yesterday, like, "Hey, your activity has changed," and I'm like, "Yeah, thanks, phone. I know." <laughs> <laughs> I'm not feeling well. Yeah, that to me the most. The most beneficial thing that a person can do is action and choosing action is an action in itself. Like a choice is an action. So what choice can you make to keep moving forward with your project, with what you said you were going to do, you know, that it's not easy either all the time. But if you make that decision to show up like we did for for, right. for doing this, then it's not a question really. And if we really couldn't do this and get a podcast out, what's going to come out is a 30 second clip of me saying, really sorry, we haven't been well. We'll be back next week. I can do that. Like that's a bare minimum thing I could do. You just did it. Yeah. I think I rambled enough about that. What are your thoughts? So the one thing I was going to ask you about to dig into a little deeper. So Seth Godin, um, you you talked about that's the dip, and I remember it was a I can't remember the book, um, but I'm going to ask you what it is and talk more about it in a bit. It's probably called the dip. It's literally called the dip. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Look at that. I knew what it was, and I, I didn't even. But I remember several years ago in my job, I was doing something. I can't even remember what it was, but it was a pretty big project and trying to figure out how on earth (laughs) am I going to get through this? How do I keep showing up calm, collected, moving forward? And I believe you put it on like an audio, like, do you have it on audible? Yeah. Oh, I know I do. Because I think we listen to it well as puzzling because puzzling's my go-to to to like work through things, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we listen to it together and it's one of those things in that concept. So I want you to talk a little bit more about it, Mm. but um, it was incredibly helpful for me to reframe, reframe myself and help me keep pushing because I felt like it wasn't a dip. I felt like I was at the bottom of like a cavern (laughs) and was just going to be sitting there and I had no idea how to build a ladder get out of the situation I was currently trying to to navigate. So well, I kind of said as much as I can without having the book right in front of me. But the key takeaway for me, you're going to get through it because people like us do things like this is kind of what I say. And I'm not sure which book that first came from or if it's simply from a blog post of his. But Seth is really good at making sure I remember that I'm choosing to own the project or own how I show up. And that's empowering. And that's 
kind of what I hold with that. When you feel like giving up or you feel like, the, like, how am I going to get out of this cavern, this dip? It's like, well, what's the next smallest piece that you can do and do that and then do that next one and then do the next one. I think the reason it resonates with you so well is because you, I think we're maybe stuck in the long arc, the big, the outcome, like what happens at the end and what, where I need to get to. Right. And I was and it's so easy for me to tell you mm-hmm. <laughs> from the outside, right? It's easier to see from the outside yeah. than you but yourself seeing it. But when you're in the dark cavern, it's, I mean, that that was me sharing that with you. That's me trying to turn a light on when you're in the darkness. And that's, I think, honestly, what we're trying to do, talking about the things that we talk about here. It doesn't all have to be so damn serious. That's mm-hmm. from The Art of Possibility. Don't take yourself so damn seriously. I fall prey to that a lot too, but I'm working on it because it's a lot more fun if you if you can laugh at yourself or or get a little different perspective, right? And a big part of that is having someone else that can turn on a light or open a door for you and help you get out of a dip that you're in. And sometimes it has to be you. And that's why it's like, oh, okay, here's this resource. Here's this book. You listen to it and see what you hear. And maybe that'll resonate better than me just telling you how to do X, Y, or Z, right? But getting out of the dip the concept, the idea when someone says it, it's like, oh yeah, just do the next, just do the next thing. Choose action, da da da. Yeah. Sounds great. But in practice, it might just be writing a list of all of the steps instead of thinking of all yeah. I was even saying that to you today. I was telling Keith this morning that even on my best days, I when I'm journaling and doing my morning routine, one of the biggest things that I'm trying to work on and work through is I call it the ticker tape. Mm. in my head, you know, like on CNN or whatever, where you see like all the different news topics coming or like the stock market. It's the feed, right? The feed. Yeah, the feed. So whenever I'm trying to focus on one thing, so often I'm like, oh, maybe I could Google that really quick because I've been wondering about that for several days now. And so I find myself being pulled in different directions mentally So one of the things that I have been spending the last several years trying to work on is being present and regaining my focus. So I've been working on meditation. I've really spent my time learning how to implement and that I used to always say that meditation and yoga, things like that weren't for me because my mind was way too busy. And I may have already said this on this podcast, did I? (laughs) Either on the podcast or to me. And I say, that's exactly why you need to meditate. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And I will say when I get in a a practice of meditation, and I'm not talking one hour in a room by myself in the dark, focusing, I'm talking, I use um, the call map. And so I'm talking, uh, you know, three to five minute sort of breathing exercise, even just to try and practice bringing my mind back to the task at hand really helps helps me. Anyway, I don't know exactly how I got on this tangent, Keith, Hmm. uh, but I was talking about, oh, you were saying one of the next best things is writing, just writing down maybe the list. And so I told Keith that this morning when I was journaling, I had part of my page where I was journaling a list of the things that were coming up so I could think them, forget them, think them, forget them, but Mm -hmm. not lose them. So they got off of that ticker tape because I... (laughs) If I didn't write them down and get them out, download them in some way, I knew that they would keep coming round and round. Because you would keep holding on to it so you wouldn't forget. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and just to interject real quick, that's one of my favorite things on Field Notes. It's, it's the quote is, I'm not writing it down to remember later. I'm writing it down to remember now. Write it down now so you're not having to remember it for later. And for later can be later and you can be now. Yeah. So anyway, I love field notes. I, I have one in my pocket all the time so I can write stuff down <laughs> and so I can kind of let it go, which probably means I forget a lot of things that are in there unless I go back. But I would forget much more if I didn't write it down. I interrupted. Sorry. No, no, you didn't. So you're working on writing things down. Yep. So that was the first thing that I was thinking was just around the kind of the heaviness I was feeling and the pressure maybe of keeping the momentum going yeah. for the podcast this week and having it be shortened and having us not feel um, 100%. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing too that I've been thinking about just based on our how we started out this session was around the importance 
of making space and time to step away and recharge and connect with those that you love. Right. And that's, so that's kind of what we talked about last time, right? Is like, how do we, how do we recharge? What, what lights us up? And that's what last weekend was, right? Is a a chance for us to make space and time for, for us Mm -hmm. as a couple and, and embrace that. And I think I, cause I think I had said, you know, in, in a few more years, it's going to be back to you and I. Oh, that, that terrified me. Not in the way you think. Um, it terrified me though. I'm like, mm-hmm. how do we have kids that are old enough that that could possibly be true? Right. But it's gonna it's gonna keep happening. Like we're they're they're going to keep becoming their own people, big people, you know. And they're both almost you know, taller than both of us. Yeah, and and I'm like, we're gonna have a lot more time together again. So we're gonna ha- we have to practice being that way again. You know, I kind of was <laughs> laughing about that on our, on our drive there. I'm like, we, we got to remember how to be together sometimes. Like it's coming faster than we think, not just them moving to the next stage, but us moving to the next stage of back to what do we do with our days in, in, you know, 20 years or, or so, or 30 years, like the days are long, but the years are short kind of thing. But anyway, I think, so those two thoughts, I think match up where you're talking about how do we keep momentum going and how do we make time and space? And so I think I even journaled about this in my little daily practice that I do that I'm like, I think I wrote, I'm having a hard time or I'm feeling really bad about is the momentum stopping. And I never, I didn't share that with you, but it's, it's so funny how transparent I am. (laughs) Like how you can, you can read <laughs> can me. can read you like a book. Yeah. And, and I. <laughs> like a Twilight novel. Like, you like can, I you can, can tell. He- you can hear what's what, coming. You can hear what I'm putting out and I'm not saying anything. So that just shows like how, how transparent I am when I'm not, I, I mean, I'm loud when I'm happy and I'm pretty loud when I'm sad, but one of them's vocal and one of them's not, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> one's both, more of a stewing. They're both loud. Yeah. Dude brood. <laughs> Dude brood. That's what you call it. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I'm feeling that that weight of that snowball slowing down and not keeping going. I, I've been feeling that over the last week. And the whole point of that trip was to recharge and, and give us some time and space. And, and we had it. But it was so brief because of like what we came back to. And, and I, I, I think I literally wrote like, I hope it was worth it because this, this sucks. Like feeling, feeling the way I'm feeling and not being able to do anything. Was it worth Dang. the fun I had? No, I, yeah. Uh, and <laughs> it's it okay. is. I, I, was get just, you. I was probably just, I was a little scared of what might happen to my body and how I might be feeling. And I've been knocking on wood a lot, which is, which, which is a good thing because I've, I've been feeling better than I expected, but also I'm like, oh, but no, I I don't feel great. I <laughs> I need I need to take it easy, and I and, and so that time and space has been shortened of the time to do this work, right? Work on this project. I mean, I'm, I'm rambling a lot. Uh, I think you brought up some really good points about how do you keep the momentum going. That's something I want to think about and talk about. So you kind of, you said that you had concerns. Was it before you found out you had COVID or after that you were concerned the momentum would keep going or both? I was having concerns going into our vacation because that severely shortens the amount of time I have to work on editing. But it also, we hadn't recorded this episode yet. No. And so I'm like, we're going to have to, I'm going to have, I'm going to have to come home and we're going to have to record like right away. Yeah. But we couldn't. (laughs) So I don't know. I'm rambling right now. So I, I, one thing I think maybe the point I'll make is that keeping the momentum going, if I don't find time and space to step away and unplug, I can't keep the momentum going at the level that I want it to, if that makes sense. It does make sense. And yet I tend to ignore that in myself where I have a, I have a hard time not making progress, even just on small tasks. Right. But then, and then, cause then when I embrace that and I like let the dishes go or the laundry, it just feels so much worse when I try to get back to it. And there's mountains of both, you know, kind of thing. Uh, I'm try. I I've been trying to embrace being okay with finding the time to relax and, and get that, that space to let things just breathe right, and come back recharged obviously this time it's like we 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 had some time away to recharge and then it kind of got all that recharge got drained pretty quickly <laughs> no but it, it did i 
I was I was thinking of when you were talking through kind of that doing something like having momentum going and then taking time and how sometimes that doesn't necessarily even logically if we know we need to unplug and take time it's not easy to do always and I was thinking it's similar to when you're baking a loaf of bread or something like that. Just bear with me on this one, Mm -hmm. (laughs) where I feel like there's that first part, right, where you're putting all of the ingredients together in a bowl, and then you need to actually set it in a warm place, cover it with saran wrap or a towel, and let it rise. And so you have to take some time for the magic to happen, for it to reset, to have the chemistry just right, and then you're able to bake it. Well, depending on the recipe, sometimes you have to punch it down and Mm -hmm. let it rise again. But maybe that's what happened here, right? COVID punched us down and then like, we're rising again. <laughs> right, right. I don't know. So I'm just saying all that is sometimes the momentum, although it might look like you're pausing, as long as you're aware of where you're at in the process and that you're going to come back to it and you have that commitment and you hold yourself accountable, sometimes you need to trust the process too. I think a lot of people put a little too much emphasis on like the streak, like the unbroken streak. Yeah. And and I am though too. Like I don't want I don't want to miss a Thursday. I want to have a practice in place where if I go on vacation, I have episodes in the bank that are already scheduled. That's how I want to show up. And and I see it in not even things like this, but like when I stop doing my morning pages, it's like, oh, the streak is broken. And then I let it kind of, and then it's like, oh, okay, I guess. Then it's like, I go like months without doing it. It's like, okay, I can either get down on myself for that, or I can say, so maybe it's just not helping me right now. Or it's not, if, if I wanted to do it, I would do it. Right. It's kind of what I, what I say to myself. And then I'm like, instead of like, well, everybody, everybody that's creative does A, B, or C. So I should do it, or I should time block, or da-da-da. You're shooting on yourself. Yeah, that's my point, is like, I start doing that, and instead of focusing on that, it's like, what's the next choice or the next action that's going to lead me moving forward to the thing that I say I want to be doing? And that's how I am looking to keep the momentum going, is I'm showing up to do the podcast because I want to, and I said I would. So I think, but I think you're bringing up an interesting point because it connects what we're talking about momentum to even to the topic of perfectionism too. perfect streaks. I will say I'm right now I'm part of a group that is doing a 100 day in a row journaling challenge and there's not a prize. I don't think there's anything wrong with streaks, by the way, either, but I don't like how down I feel when I break a streak. And that's something I want to think about. But anyway, keep, keep no. talking about it. Because so it's it's inspiring to me to hear you say you're doing that. Or like yeah. when other people say, I wrote 100 songs in 100 days or, you know, a song a day. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm, I wish I could do that. Or can I, could I do that? I'm afraid to try that because I would probably <laughs> not do it. You So, okay. So I'm uh, on this challenge, right? Journaling 100 days. I'm on day 78 of 100 right now. Mm. Which I, I'm... That's that's close. I'm doing pretty good, right? Yeah. Now, I'll let you in on a little secret. I missed one day <laughs> in the 78 days. Yeah. One day. And so I, I do feel, I'm like, yes, I did 77 days. But the one thing in this group, they said, keep going. If you miss a day, don't adjust your number. Just keep going. And I'm like... Don't know how I feel about that. But what's interesting is the next day, they say, if you miss a day, keep counting, journal anyway, but journal about why, if you have trouble continuing to that next number, even though you know you missed a day, journal on that. Yeah. (laughs) What are your thoughts about having to have a perfect streak? What are your thoughts about what does, what do you make it mean that you missed a day? Why are you making this a big deal? And what might happen if you don't make this such a big deal? Yeah. And keep going. How is that resistance manifesting? Yeah. And being insidious and preventing you from changing or, or moving forward. Right. Yeah. And stops you from growing because of the scariness of that or whatever, you know, Whatever, like I can project all that, but that's similar to this morning when you were t- talking about your journaling and and having too much going through your head. And I I said, well, yeah, just write about those things then. And so it's just, it's, it's, it's I guess it's similar to what what your group said. It, their their the recommendation is just write about that. And and that's I think that's kind of the point. That's the point to me for like morning pages is just brain dump make room to either have better ideas come forth or actually see what am I thinking about. And after a few minutes of, I don't know what to write about. This is dumb. 
I don't feel like writing today and literally writing that even because I don't know what to write about. You find, you find you get yourself to, instead of saying, why am I doing this? Why can't I think of anything? You start actually answering that question. Oh, well, maybe it's because I'm hungry or I ate this last night and I don't feel that great right now. That's what I end up doing. And then it actually gives me some insights. <laughs> and so I guess the tip is write it down, write something, or instead of over-processing in my head, sometimes it helps to just write it down. Yeah. It would be fun to do a whole episode just on journaling <laughs> since you and I are really... Everybody can listen to us journal, sil- <laughs> silently journal, just, no. just scribbles. <laughs> no, but I think it's one of those things that... That would probably get a lot of views on YouTube. A video of us just like there you go. scribbling, like just thinking that, that bubbles that, above our heads. That ASMR, <laughs> like that really quiet, like people whisper talking. <laughs> I did have one example, one more example of streaks, because I thought you you stumbled upon a really interesting topic for me too. Because so I talk about the journal journaling, right? And how I've persevered through missing my one day and my 78 days, but going to Duolingo. So I had a good over a year streak going. I had mm-hmm. used some of the street, was it streak freeze or no? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. And then once I missed a day and I couldn't repair my streak, I was like, nope. And I just, I stepped away from, Yeah. granted the pandemic happened and we were occupied with other things, but I definitely just kind of stepped away from it. I'm like, never mind. That same thing happened to me. I'm not proud of this, but I, I almost, I felt the impulse to chuck my phone across the room when I oh. lost my like 354 day streak. I was so, I, I was just, I, oh. And like, not enough was, gems could have repaired it. It was a quiet, it was a quiet rage, but I felt, I felt like throwing something and I'm like, oh, you're so childish. It's, it's not a big deal. <laughs> it felt like a big deal because of the way they gamify it. But like you said, what is that feeling and what am I assigning <laughs> to that streak and who cares? I just gave up how many years. So that, that put me in a place where I haven't studied Spanish for so, for a couple of years, basically, like with the same rigor I was. You're and, doing great. And why did in, and I just, I let it go because I didn't get a sticker on my paper, basically. And I'm just like, okay. And so I keep, I keep trying to go back, but it's sporadic, but maybe it's sporadic because I kind of let go of the streak and maybe I need to, maybe that's a time for me to hold on to it and care too much about something that's, that, that how good I'm doing or whatever, but I don't know. That'll be interesting. So I just want to mention that too, because that was a recent example of when I broke a pretty long streak of doing something and then I just kind of buried it under the rug. (laughs) Nothing to see here. I guess that's like, you didn't give up because Spanish was hard or right. He like, I don't know. The thing is, is like, do you ever get done with that? And so I was trying to compare it to the quitting at the end, which is what maybe you're supposed to do. But <laughs> I, I tend to, I tend to hide in things that are never quite finished, right? Yeah. Like I've talked about dishes and laundry, they're never done. And so it's a perfect place to hide. If I'm doing those, I'm busy. I can't come and do the podcast, right? Right. Or I can't, I, w- I didn't get the podcast edited because, oh, I had to do dishes and laundry. I just had to. And it's like, well, that's convenient because it's never done. <laughs> and I can probably be a better planner and scheduler and do it when it doesn't have to be a, a podcast release crucial or critical like <laughs> thing. But yeah, um, not that I've done that with the podcast, but I've done it with other, other things of, hey, did you do that today? No. Well, come I was busy. <laughs> and I, I think I've said, I've said that before. Like it, the realization of I was busy stopping myself from doing anything that had meaning because <laughs> I was afraid, you know, or, or is yeah. basically what it boils down to. You can be hard on yourself sometimes. Oh, I'm good at it. <laughs> you too. I know. We're, we're One of our superpowers, maybe? Peas in a pod sometimes. Can be. We can be. Let's wrap it up there. Our fun little talk about keeping momentum going. <laughs> Uh, which came out of us really not feeling any momentum. (laughs) (laughs) And so let's, let's leave with talking about one thing we've either been listening to or watching or something you're looking forward to. I just thought of something. Do you want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. 
So one thing that I'm listening to is a podcast called The Anxious Achiever. It's LinkedIn Presents The Anxious Achiever. I've been listening to this for a couple of years now, but I really enjoy listening to it because it covers leaders who are in all sorts of fields and how they're navigating mental health in their roles in those fields. And so I enjoy it because it gives me a sense of seeing myself and other people as well as some tips and strategies for how I can approach things at work. How about you, Keith? I've been listening to one of my favorite podcasts because I haven't been feeling well and it always makes me feel better. And it always has some really good recommendations uh, in the last looks episodes. So the podcast is How Did This Get Made? And it's Paul Shear, Jason Manzukis, and June Diane Raphael. They talk about bad movies <laughs> and it's hilarious. What was the movie you were watching last night? I was watching Birdemic. <laughs> in the discord with some of the other people uh they stream some movies in the discord and i haven't seen i hadn't seen that i've listened to that i've listened to the episode before but they re-released the birdemic episode it's it's the matinee monday this week and i was like i want to listen to that because it'll 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 make me laugh a little bit and then i was like oh wait i bet they're playing it and they were so it's so bad it's such a bad movie (laughs) but it's so fun to watch the movies and then listen to the podcast and i guess let's end on um, the other thing that you and I are going to that we talked about and oh sure I, I was never I, I was like oh, I don't know I don't know I'm, I'm kind of nervous about going to that but all right y'all we can go and so we got tickets so y'all we went and got ourselves well Keith went and got ourselves <laughs> LP tickets yeah I am pumped yep they are floor tickets I know I mentioned I think I'm too old to be on the floor. I do, I do still think that, <laughs> but we'll just see how it goes. Yeah. So it's also a Wednesday evening. So again, I my bedtime's like around nine. I think that's when does it start? Probably eight. I bet this will be interesting. Anyway, we'll find it'll you, be worth it. We'll though. find you like a, an espresso martini or something. <laughs> 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 well, we'll we'll have to plan. Anyway, check out the Anxious Achiever podcast. How did this get made? If you're in the mood for a, a laugh and something that's not quite as uh, personal growth based, which is what we kind of lean into a lot. And then check out LP if you haven't yet, because we're excited to go see them. And their album dropped on the 29th. So it's all available. Love Lines. Yeah. It's really great. Check it out. Check out the back catalog. Anyway. Ola's my favorite. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Uh, We'll see you next time. Bye. All right. I love you. Thank you for making everything magical. Okay. Take the compliment. Love you too. (laughs) There you go. All right. Thanks, everybody.